Welcome back to another episode of this podcast. Welcome back, guys. Oh, man, what a week. What a week it has been so far. I know that I said I was going to split this all up, but it's still here. It's still in the same place. And, uh, well, it turns out uh, when you lose all of your data on your computer, yeah, my computer completely crashed, and I lost all of my data on there. And so it just kind of, uh, I've been playing catch-up. I've been playing catch-up for the past couple of weeks, and it's been a real nightmare, but we're moving forward. That's not your problem. It's my problem. I understand it's my problem. It's not your problem, but I just had to share it because this podcast is more than just a podcast about games. It's clear. It's clear. Um, a couple, I guess, merch, right? Play. I had plans for other stuff, but all of my designs are lost. Can you tell I'm a little bit peeved by everything? Guys, this is going to be a little bit different of a podcast. I, I also got to figure out my, uh, my boom arm because the arm... I do too much oh, this stupid cable. I'm a mess. I'm a mess today. Um, I'm feeling it, dudes and dudettes. You know, like when you want to do something more than ever, but then also you don't want to do it more than ever. I guess it's more like you love something a lot. I love creating stuff. I love making things, and I love having this, growing this community, but... Something I did not anticipate um, when I got involved with video games was also the community. See, like, when I first started, no one gave a rat's butt what I said. No one cared about what I did. No one cared about anything, really. Um, and people would say, you know, comments, wow, this, you know, your stuff looks good or whatever. Now we have a little, we have the ball rolling. We got ourselves a little bit of notoriety. We, we um, you know, we're, we're starting to move places and, and grow a little bit. And now people care, and it's uh, it's interesting because you know, like what I've what I've noticed was there are a lot of, I I've I like to say that I have thick skin, but man, it's real, man. The comments and stuff is it's tough. People just say really really mean things a lot, and uh, I I try the thing for me is I try to interact with as many people as possible online and one thing that I find you know one thing that I I wanted to commit to when I started doing this was being present as much as possible and so the best way to be present is to respond and someone leaves a comment you I I ask a question they leave a comment and when they leave a comment then I answer the question right and that's just the 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 back and forth um and so I expected that when I did that, you know, there'd be at least some sort of discourse happening. And it turns out, nope, <laughs> people are just jerks sometimes. And there's a couple that just like, they stick with you. They really do. And I know it's fake internet people that don't really care about anything. And they really just sad all the time. But like, still, it just sticks with you. And I cannot, you know, I, I can't say this enough. Like, it, it's tough. Like, you know, it, when I see that kind of stuff on a regular basis, it just makes me want to quit a lot. Um, I won't, and I'll never quit because this is this community is too big. And clearly there's a problem, right? So the problem being people are just want to be jerks all the time. And I'm tough enough to, you know, for the most part, handle it. It's still, you know, someone who can take a punch, take a hit, they don't sit there and be like, yeah, this feels good, right? Someone who has a strong jaw, you know, you look at boxers or fighters, they, they get hit a bunch, they can take a bunch of hits. They're not sitting there going like, this doesn't hurt. It still hurts. They just have a threshold of pain that's like, this hurts, but it's not so much I need to stop. And, I, you know, I, I'd say that I'm in this kind of in the same boat here. Is like this, this stuff, it's tough. And I know that we're starting off the podcast so deep and so emotional, but, like, as far as I'm at, guys, like, uh, this podcast is supposed to be kind of unhinged and just a little bit behind the curtain. And I want my channel to be more of that stuff too, because it's just kind of what I am and how I'm traveling through this creative space. And, uh, it's, it's just a wild ride. Like it being, a, being a creator has been a really interesting journey for me. I, back when I first started doing this, you, there's that thing that you do, right? You look at creators and you're like, man, everything must be great. I tell you right now, like I, and someone made a comment and it really bothered me. Like 
I don't get to play video games as much as you would think I get to play video games. Like, I really want to go and play through some of these games I get. I play for the first few hours, give my first impressions. I don't give game reviews. I do not release reviews that are full, like, comprehensive reviews because a game needs to be completed for me to release a review. I release impressions or, like, a first look review or something like that. Not a comprehensive, like... I don't rate a game. I don't do any of that stuff because I don't, I'm not able to finish them. And part of it is just because I'm trying to keep up with, you know, the next, the other big channels and stuff like that. But like, I'm realizing more and more as I do this, that that's not necessarily going to help me. And to be honest with you, uh, financially, it's really, really getting to a point where I'm like, okay, something needs to change because I can't afford to keep buying games. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I am just now starting to get uh, companies to reach out to me and be like, hey, review our product. And the, the last one I got was that gaming monitor, which is really exciting because like growing up, I loved the idea of mobile gaming. That's why I liked Game Boy so much. That's why I liked the SP so much. I love the idea of mobile gaming and I was completely fascinated, blown away, ex- like just through the roof, just completely don't know what I'm saying right now. I've lost my words. I'm so tired. I was stoked on playing in the car and i remember my buddy dylan i grew up with him a uh, huge shout out to dylan i don't think you'll ever see this but hey dylan remember moha eh he's the only person that would understand that or mojo kago um the he his mom got i think it was a suburban yeah no, it was a tahoe she had a chevy tahoe yep it was a tahoe and in that tahoe there were displays and uh, he had moved from where I lived when I was a kid to a much further away place, uh, about 45 minutes away from where I was living. And when he moved out there, I was really sad. He was my best friend. I would go over to his house. We'd play video games all night long. We'd make stupid videos. This is when my, my video, my creativeness kind of kicked off. We used to play uh, all, literally we'd play Medal of Honor all night long. And, um, and then we would edit these stupid videos of us jumping off of couches and reversing stuff. And his, uh, you know, he, he had a copy of uh, Final Cut Pro and I, we learned how to use Final Cut Pro as like middle schoolers. It was a really fun time. Um, anyway, he moved to another uh, city. And so I had, you know, I would go out to his place, um, his new home. And then, you know, I'd get dropped off and then his mom would drop me back off um, back you know, where I lived. Um, and I remember this one time in particular, I went out to his place because he never had, um, video game systems, uh, at least the ones that I had. So I had PlayStation two and I brought my PlayStation two with me to his house. And on the way home, he's like, we should hook the PlayStation two up to the car TV. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is insane. And I thought it was like the most amazing thing in the world i'm like this is the greatest thing that i've ever been able to do I, this is a dream come true i'm playing a playstation 2 in a car the monitor was like five inches it was in this like on the ceiling thing like it was a and it was not it was vga not hdmi it was vga um there's everything about it was just like so low res and refresh rate didn't even matter because i was playing in the car and so it was just this this beautiful moment and from that moment i've been obsessed with mobile gaming like when the gamecube had the flip up screen you could get for the, that that was awesome the ps1 with the flip up screen that you could play your playstation one wherever you wanted as long as you could plug it in that was amazing thought it was the coolest thing in the world and i've always thought it was so cool and i will always think it's so cool and if you don't think it's cool you're wrong it's okay but you're wrong you're not right you're wrong if you don't think mobile gaming is cool what you doing huh you sad are you you sad guy you sad guy mobile gaming is the coolest thing ever it's the coolest i know some people are mad but guess what's my podcast say what i want I'm a little feisty today. Um, and so when I had this company reach out to me, Lapau, Lapau, and they said, hey, we got gaming monitors. You want to try, not gaming monitors, sorry. We got portable monitors, low profile portable monitors. First thought is what knockoff drop ship foreign company sending me some crap product that's just going to be pieces of plastic glued together to be knockoffs of real things. 
first impression, right? I get that all the time. I'm not going to lie. English wasn't perfect. And that's usually a big tell when the English isn't um, super good. But then I, I emailed back and I was like, talk to me. You know, and I usually, I, I email back somewhat cryptic, and but and, but specific at the same time. Like, like I'm interested, let's get this conversation. Or, or like something along the lines. I think it was, uh, what did I say? I said something, I don't have my phone with me or my computer. I was like, let's keep this conversation going. This seems fun. Right? So they email me back. They're like, oh, we have this, this, and this. This thing's coming out. And I'm like, oh, these guys are real. So I kept talking to them. And then, you know, at first they're like, which dis- they, they offered for me to try their new smaller version. And I said, you know what? That's cool. But you guys have two. You have a 14 inch and you have a 15.6 inch. I think it'd be fun to compare the two because people like options. And if I could compare two products, then maybe they'd be able to figure out which one's going to be the best option for them. If they need a smaller one or a bigger one, if the smaller one's going to have the, you know, enough, this, this, and this. And they're like, great on board, super fun, super great. Um, you know, a couple weeks went by and they're like, unfortunately, because of everything, you know, just what everyone says. And you know, honestly, here's, here's a side note. If you ever are going to respond to someone, be original. Okay. And nothing against LaPau. I get it. You probably talk to people all the time, but there are three phrases that are no longer allowed to be said, okay? You ready for them? Sit down, take out a pen and a piece of paper and write them down. Not your phone, write them down. You ready? Due to the global supply shortage, those words, never say them again. You wanna know why? I bet you wanna know why. It's because when you say them, you immediately turn into Mark Zuckerberg clone. Why Mark Zuckerberg clone? Because I'm trying to think of the blandest looking, unoriginal, most boring form. And Mark Zuckerberg fits the bill. Nothing against you, Marky Mark and the Zucker Bunch. Hey, Mark Stuffer. Hey, Markle. Hey, Mark Hey Hell. The Zuck Man. Nothing against you, buddy. I know that you're probably in all my info, but it's just you're kind of bland. <laughs> when you think of like uh, the, he looks like the starting character when you are building your character. He looks like the base. If you like take your character and you just put like no modifiers into anything, it's Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is the base character. <laughs> I don't know. It's so funny. Mark Zuckerberg, he's the guy that starts. <laughs> okay, anyway. But when you say due to the global supply shortage, you immediately lose all of your stats and you turn into the base character. It's so, I hear that and it's like, it's, it's, it remind it reminds me of just like the Charlie Brown want, 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 like I'm like, oh good, here we go. Here we go. It's such a cop out. It is such a cop out. Or when people blame what's happening in the world right now, like if they're just like, oh, it's because of this, you know, you know, these are the times are these. And the reason why I'm not saying it is because YouTube is a smart info based algorithmic thing. And I'm not critiquing or talking on the subject. But if I drop it, then they automatically categorize this video. Super weird how that all works out. But whatever at least that's what i've been told that happens and whether that's true or not whatever i would rather not this get grouped into all of those conversations because that's not what i'm talking about but what i'm talking about is like when people just say like they're late and they're just like well you know this is happening and i'm like no you didn't plan well you know so that's that's one so phrase number one due to the global supply shortage uh thing number two and this is wildly specific, but I guess it's still relevant because that short I made is keeping does keep getting comments and views. If you're talking about the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller and you mention the 
bumper not working or stick drift, you're Mark Zuckerberg. You just got zucked. (laughs) I guess that's it. Uh, When you turn into like a completely boring thing, you got zucked. (laughs) That's what happens. When I see or read those comments, I keep them. I don't delete anything unless it's intentionally hateful towards other people. If it's intentionally hateful towards me, people are like, F you, you're the worst person ever. I literally get comments telling me to F off or I am an effing idiot. I don't care, whatever. But if they start attacking people in the comments and I see it, it's tough because there's a lot of comments. But if I, vi- if I see someone saying something or if they're attacking a people group or if they're using hate speech towards a people group, they're out of there. And uh, I usually, I actually report it because um, you don't belong here. Um, so, but that's that's phrase number two. Phrase number two is uh, is a group of phrases which are all related to the Xbox series the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller and specifically the right bumper or the left bumper or just the bumper's not working and this. In the last phrase, are you ready? Here it is. It might be in your vernacular and you got to get rid of it or else you're going to be zucked. It's uh, calling something trash. Oh, that's trash. Oh, that's straight trash. Be more original. It's so boring. When someone starts saying, you know what? Okay, watch. I, we're going to role play right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what happens to my brain, okay? Someone goes, hey, man. I'm like, hey, I don't know why they talk that way. And they're just like, hey, so, uh, you know, due to the, gl- the second they say do, this is what happens to me. Ready? This is it. So they go like this. They go, hey, man. Oh, oh hey, how's it going? You know, uh, I'm just wondering what, what happened. Like, uh, it seems like this product is... A little bit later, you know, something's happening. Oh, well, you know, due to... Watch. Due... It's me falling asleep. Immediately. Immediately I fall asleep. Ready? Here's another one. Oh, you know, dude, I'm really enjoying Call of Duty Vanguard. Oh, that's straight trash. Watch what happens when they say trash. Straight trash. I just fell asleep and my headphones came off. Check this out. Check this out. Watch. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Hey, uh, yeah, the Xbox Series uh, or the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller is pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. Until you get stick. Ju- I fe- Oh, sorry. I fell asleep. That was so boring. Oh, my gosh. That is literally what happens when I read those things. It's just I don't understand, like... I don't understand if people just don't see, like in specifically with comments, they look at that like the, if someone says it and it's like they say the exact same thing. I'm like, do do you want to never exist? Is your goal in life to be like, hey, I want to be the shadow, not in the shadows, right? Because that's kind of freaking dope, right? Oh, I'm in the shadows, you know, whatever ninja stuff. No, th- literally the shadow right not like a cool thing like i'm the shadow of this no like the shadow like i am nothing without the person in front of me i am absolutely nothing because they represent me and everything they say and do and i simply just exist because i'm attached to their heels that's you know that's what i read and i know it seems like really aggressive and it is and it's because it's so annoying and now that I'm on the other side of some of this stuff and I'm like, okay, well, I do create stuff now. I'm in this I'm in this world. I'm now, unfortunately, experiencing some of these things. And the compound effect of being bombarded with that on a regular basis, it's crazy to think that something is silly. I'm making fun of it and, it, you know, it's silly, but it's enough to really make you start questioning things like, man, can I do this? It literally makes me want to not do this. It's so wild. I don't even understand. But like, I wake up, everything's good. I go, I start working. Okay, what am I going to work on? What am I going to look for? I get in and get on to, you know, research and look what is popular, what is happening, what questions are happening. That's another thing. It's like I've been accused of just like, oh, you're just trying to sell stuff. Here's the deal. I bought it. (laughs) Or someone's like, you're trying to make money. Yeah. 
I am trying to make money. I'm trying to make a business happen here. I'm trying to get paid so that when I get paid, my family can eat based off the money I make off this business, which is providing information for people on a regular basis. I don't get paid by PlayStation. I'll never get paid by PlayStation. And chances are, if they offered to pay me, I would still refuse because I do not want to have to be careful of how I feel about something. Um, I'm a wildly, uh, I'm a, I'm a, not wildly, because I was going to say I'm a wildly positive person. This podcast seems pretty negative, but like I'm, I'm a, I, I try to put a positive spin on things on a regular basis and I try to move forward. I'm not going to partake in the conversations of this is true. I can't even say it without falling asleep. I'm not going to partake in those conversations. My goal here isn't to showcase what is not working. My goal here is to showcase what works, what could be better and, uh, offer solutions, right? So like if I think a game is not good, if I'm like, yeah, you know what? This game is not that fun to play. Uh, attached to that is going to be the reasons this, this, and this, and attached to that is, well, these, are these things could feel a little different if we did this, this, and this, right? Being just the, uh, basically a child screaming, I don't want to is like, that's what I see. That's what I see. It's just a bunch of children screaming, you know, and especially with this new release of Call of Duty Vanguard. I'll tell you right now, I've been really enjoying Call of Duty Vanguard. I don't like Call of Duty games because they're really, really, I don't know, they're kind of aggressive and they're not fun for me. And I'm a sucker for uh, World War II stuff. Maybe because in middle school, I played Medal of Honor and I played those games. I played Call of Duty back then too um, with my buddy Dylan and some of our other friends. I played Battlefield 1942. I mean, Back in like 2002, 2003, uh, when I was in middle school, like that, was I in middle school? I think it was like 2003, around that time period. I know that like between 2002 and 2007, like World War II stuff was all over the place, Band of Brothers, all that stuff. You know, I think I was older than that. I don't know. My dates are off. But I just know that growing up during video games back then, World War II was a really popular uh, way of skinning everything. And so... When they released Vanguard, I was like, okay, maybe, I don't know. Call of Duty's already put a bad taste in my mouth just because of the style of game, the community is really, really toxic and immature, and it looks like they're, they want to stay that way. And, like, you know, I've been in games with proximity chat, and it's just, like, calling people the gnarliest things, and I'm like, oh, this person obviously is just a waste, like, this just wastes, wastes their time. Not is a waste, because no one's a waste. Everyone's, everyone has purpose. But this person wastes their time by insulting and by hurting other people. It's a complete waste of time. They obviously do not value um, their time. And so, like, it's just experiencing that on a regular basis was just like, oh, this is stupid. And so it soured the game for me. And that is still present in Call of Duty Vanguard. You know, you, know, you can mitigate, turn that stuff off. But what Call of Duty Vanguard has done is it's reintroduced the game. It's a little bit different. It feels good. It feels fun. And people are enjoying it, you know? There are people that are enjoying it. There are people that aren't enjoying it. Some people are complaining. It's just the same game rescanned. I'm like, I would argue that Call of Duty has been that for the past 20 years. Um, it hasn't even been around 20 years, but you get the point. It's been, it's just, it's a shooting game with arenas. Like that is, you can only do so much. You can only introduce so much. It's a, you know, there's, there's only so far you can go. Um, but you know, somehow they're able to change stuff here and there. And so like, I, I was like, okay. And it did something special. It, it, it drew me in and I played, you know, I've played probably, 10, 15 hours now, which I know is not a lot compared to some people. Some people stream that in one day. But again, I don't get to play a lot of games, and I feel guilty because some of the games I really want to play are just sitting there. Like, I really want to get through more of Guardians of the Galaxy. I really want to finish Ghost of Tsushima. Um, you know, some of these games there, I really want to play more Mario Party. Um, and so, you know, and the new Pokemon's coming out. I'm going to get that too. It's just all these different games all the time, all the gosh darn time. Um, but it sucked me in and I'm like, cool. Well, they did something special, right? They made something that a new player, I would consider myself a new player is willing and wanting to play. And, uh, I, that's great. That's great. But people still look at it and they're like, this game is trash. It's garbage. I hate it. You know, I will say for every person that says they hate a video game and just like, this is the, they, they actively, will go out of their way to talk terrible about it. 
anyone who does that, I don't understand how their brain works. How can something consume someone so much? You know, like, let's think about that for a second. It's kind of crazy to me when you think about it. Like, something is so, they don't like it so much that they're willing to waste even more time on it. So it's like, they don't like it so much that they would rather still talk about it than completely ignore it. When I don't like something, you want to know what I do? I don't think about it. But I'm like, oh, I really don't like, what's a, ah, here's a game I don't like. Here, here, I'll tell you a game I don't like. And this is going to rustle some feathers. Ruffle? Russell? Who cares? Is it rustle some feathers or ruffle some feathers? Please tell me in the comments below. Um, when someone says, hey, I, when I, not someone, when I think about a game, I don't, I don't like, um, I don't know how, why I'm saying it this way. I don't like the game Conquers for a day. Conquers bad for a day. I don't like it. I, I don't like it. You want to know what I do when I don't like it? I don't play it. I often don't think about it. The only reason why I thought about it now is because someone asked me if I liked it or not like a month ago. And I said, no. And I move on. There's nothing it owes me. It costs me nothing. I like, I, I don't understand like why, you know, people are that way with these games. It's kind, it's kind of crazy. I know that, you know, this community and striving to be the most mindful and positive, I guess some of it has to be with, you know, being really mindful. When you're mindful of something, there's a lot of, you know, your actions have intention. And I think that's something that's really important in, in the gaming community right now. I think there's been a lot of like this knee jerk, just like being uh, the, just raw emotion, raw, uncontrolled, inappropriate emotion that really is not producing any sort of value, right? So to speak. And uh, I think that, you know, when you when we talk about mindfulness in that way, you know, mindfulness gets so hippy-dippy. And uh, let, let's unpack it real quick because I think it's important. So with mindfulness, like literally in the gaming community, I, what is mindfulness in gaming community? It's just the intentional reaction to stuff, right? The intentional the intentional thought, the thoughtfulness and stuff like that. So for instance, we're going to use the same, the same thing. I don't like something. Well, the being mindful about it would, you know, being a ta taking a step back and looking at, okay, what what I don't like about it. Conquer's bad for a day. I don't like, at the time when it was introduced, I was really young and I was not into that humor. It was a little bit more on the mature side and that was not my cup of coffee. I was not into that kind of thing. And so I stayed away from it, right? And as I grew older, I realized I'm still not into that type of humor. I don't really enjoy South Park, I don't enjoy Family Guy. Maybe it's because of my slightly more conservative and religious upbringing. Probably not because I don't cuss on this channel. But you best believe if you meet me in person, I do. <laughs> not proud of it, but I don't have, you know, my my words aren't usually, aren't, aren't often the cleanest. And so, um, like, I just, I don't like raunchy humor. I don't like those kind of movies. I don't like that kind of stuff. It's just not something I like to think about. So you know what happens? I don't. And when I take a step back and we look at that example, I go, like, okay, what about Congress Bad Friday? Raunchiness, mature. Okay, I don't like that kind of stuff. And I go back and take a step further. Why don't I like that kind of thing? Well, I just don't like to fill my mind with those thoughts on a regular basis because I'd rather have my mind consumed by other more positive and potentially more fruitful thoughts. Um, you know, and if you think that kind of stuff is funny and it's your, it's your, your thing, fine, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that I don't. And if my mind only gets a certain amount of bandwidth a day, a month, a year, let's fill it with stuff. That's going to be, you know, something that's really going to give it that juice that I want to fill it with. And so that's what I mean by mindfulness, but we're not seeing that as much in the gaming community. It's just a lot of like this. I bought it. You owe me everything i gave you 60 dollars. you owe me the perfection that i want which is stupid right it's really it's it's really i yes there's an element of that that's like i gave you money this should be a fair exchange but there's also something called preference right it's just like when someone goes to a movie and they're like that was a terrible movie i'm gonna try to get my money back no don't go and try to get your money back you didn't like the movie you paid for it you watched it, you didn't like it, move on. 
that's just, it's, it's learning, right? And so when it comes to these, people get all up in arms like, oh my gosh, it's trash. I can't believe that this is happening. This is garbage. Just like, okay, maybe take a step back, look at it, say, okay, what are the things I don't like about it? Uh, this is kind of boring to me. The mechanics are a little bit off. This is frustrating. Look at it and be like, is this something that's going to happen? Is this, could this be updated with a patch? Are they going to do that? If they do, hey, you're set because your game just got fixed. If they don't, if it's truly just the gameplay itself is not fun, you're not enjoying it, guess what you do? You sell it if you have a physical copy or you don't play it if you have a digital copy. And you move on. Sitting there and going on a crusade and being like, oh, everyone has to know that this is the worst game ever. It's trash. It's garbage. I hate it. It's the worst. You suck. F you. It's just like, dude. If there is not a better example of someone turning into a child on a playground who has to come in from recess and doesn't recess, recess the candy bar. Yeah, I said it. I messed up. I called attention to it and we're going to talk about it for a second. Who's Reese? I remember Mitch Hedberg, a comedian that I really loved, um, made a joke about if Reese ever shows up, I think, and you have a Reese's peanut butter cup. You have to give it to him. I think that's pretty funny. I think he also talks about Kit Kat and how they carve Kit Kat into your thing. It's like, where are my letters? I think he talks about, like, you owe me some letters going to the Kit Kat factory and asking for letters. That's great. It's great. But in that regard, it just, it, someone, you know, a little kid that's out on the playground and is just getting called back from recess and is crying and I don't want to come back. I want to stay out here. So that's what it looks like to me. And it's just like, man, this gaming community is really rough. In it, it gets heavy. Coming back to what I started with full circle, I can bring it back, man. I can bring it back, dude. I can bring it back to the beginning. Whoa. It's coming full circle and come back to like just feeling it and feeling the weight. And the weight is like when you, my, my purpose here is to create the most positive and mindful gaming community out there. How does that happen? I don't know. And I'm still trying to figure it out. Am I going to be able to do that and make enough money to survive? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out a way to just be able to survive. And that's, that's the part that's tough. If you uh, are going to make start a channel, let me give you a first piece of advice. Don't do it to make money while you are having to make money. Don't, no, don't start a channel because you're trying to make money to survive. Start a channel while you're doing something else too because the amount of pressure is almost unbearable. Um, so that being said, uh, I'm trying to create the most positive and mindful gaming community out there. Um, and that, you know, that mission statement, I guess, needs to be refined in some way because it's oddly vague in its specificity. But that being said, uh, how does that look? How do we do that? And I think what I'm noticing is that the gaming community is really, really, really dirty right now. It's really gross and it's, you know, it's toxic. And um, I'm in it and I'm feeling it. And it's just like, you know, in order to clean up some of that sewage, you have to get in there and unplug some of the drains. And unfortunately, it's a dirty job. And I'm realizing that I think in this podcast, in this conversation right here, you're, you're in this discovery right now. I'm realizing that there's a lot of weight that comes with going in and trying to clean up some of that gnarliness. Because I'm not here. Yeah, I'm going to make fun of stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to poke fun. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be kind of, you know, uh, is it brash? I think it's brash. I don't know. I, didn't, I don't read much. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm going to do that here and there. Heavily influenced by, you know, podcasts. So some of my, some of my attitude comes out in that regard. That didn't make any sense. Um, but anyway, I, my, my true, the true purpose here is to, you know, clean things up a little bit and hope, hope that, you know, a little bit of sarcasm and satire and stuff like that can, can come through and it doesn't offend too much and maybe you know like in calling out some of the behaviors that i'm noticing maybe that does you know ruffle some feathers rustle some i'm never gonna know and i'm not gonna look it up because i make the rules dudes i make the rules i'm not gonna look it up okay you can let me know below and i'll believe you but just know that i'm not gonna look it up i'll listen to what you say because you are the people I care about, but I'm not going to look it up. 
moving on back. Um, you know, I'm hoping that sometimes when I say stuff, you know, I, I do intentionally say stuff that could put, could rile someone up a little bit because I want people who are aggressive. I want them to know that they're children. And they're acting that way, right? Because I, I, I want that. I want them to be like, well, how... I'm not a child. It's like, cool. Now we're talking. Now we're moving a little bit. Now we're grooving because that, you know, that obviously the style of communicating, which is the part that is, I'm realizing is really tough. The style of communicating with the people I'm trying to help potentially usher into a new way of this new gaming community. Cause I honestly believe that in the next three to five years, as this happens, it's a long time. That's a long commitment. But in this next three to five years, as we clean this stuff up, those people, if they don't change, they will be alone. And there's nothing worse than being alone, right? And that's another reason why this exists is because I was alone for such a long time. And I'm like, I need to create something that I needed back then. And hopefully people can find it now and be like, oh my gosh, I need this community more than ever. And so they'll be alone. And I don't want them to be alone, because th- that kind of thought process, that kind of behavior, it's going to die. We are going to squash it. We are going to destroy. This isn't a, you know, because just because it's positivity and mindfulness doesn't mean we're going to come after. We're going to come at it in a way that is just like, will you please, just maybe stop doing that? No, it's it's the complete transformation of the vernacular it's a complete it's it's looking in looking at that behavior and looking at it being like that's odd what why are you doing that come on let's go let's go up come on come on come on that kind of thing right and the reason is because it's just it's it needs to stop abruptly i mean the fact that companies have to put out multiple uh fail safe not fail safe multiple different ways to combat hate speech and stuff like that is unbelievable the fact that we have a report button for hate speech is unreal unreal and i was listening to a podcast by uh, one of my favorite comedians chris D'Elia, and he talks about how every person online because he just experienced an incredible transformation. Uh, you know, he he had he went through the whole cancel thing, and he got into a little bit, uh, a little spicy water, and came back, apologized, asked for forgiveness, and you know, worked on himself, and is you know, is transformed because of it, which is a beautiful thing. But he talks about people who comment. He's like, everyone who has an account should also have to show their name. And you know, unfortunately, when it comes to Oh, my little R2 unit is making noise. Unfortunately, when it comes to the internet, you don't. It's an anonymous thing. When And I know that there's privacy and stuff like that that plays into it. I get it, right? I'm not an idiot. But here's the deal. The I agree. I agree. If you are going to be someone who talks online, it should be you. Your anonymity exists if your mouth is shut. The second your fingers are going, your name is showing, baby. Love that. The second you start typing, we need to know who you are. Because you hide behind a screen name, you hide behind that, and it's just, you can say whatever the heck you want, you can do whatever the heck you want, you can just, there's no repercussions. I think if you're going to be someone who's going to attack people and be aggressive, you should be public. People should see and know where you are. And that should be the way it is. I think that should be the way it is. And, uh, you know, privacy, you gave up your privacy when you started attacking people. That's that's kind of how I look at it. It's you, don't, you don't deserve to have privacy online if you're going to be aggressive and attack people. It's just, it's awful. But, yeah, it's just heartbreaking to see that companies have to put these safety measures in place because the community is so gross. And, uh I'm feeling that weight, baby. I'm feeling it. And, and and the tough part is like, you know, real talk. Like I, I'm doing this. I know that there's, I have community members, but like I'm a super social person. I'm a really, I'm an extrovert and it's tough, man. Like I've never, 
worked by myself before. I don't like it. I don't want to do this channel by myself. I have to. There's a, you know a lot of external factors that make it so I have to. One, I have a kid and I take care of my kid. And so I can't go to an office. My wife goes to an office. So having a team right now is not possible. Two, I live in a state that, you know, I mean, it's no, it's no lie. I live in California. You know, I live in California, and uh, not a lot of people stay here in California. They're all leaving. I wanted to leave, but I have such a great family here that um, they win, so I'm staying. Um, and, you know, that's that makes things challenging. Um, location. And lastly is, like, like it's... Game, gamers, it looks like a lot of people just do stuff on their own. I would love to have a team that I work with. I don't want to do this alone. I don't want it. I don't want this channel. Like, I, I want to change the name of the channel. You know, I know I go back and forth, but like, I'd like to change it to something that is more based on a group. I want to build out a group. I, I don't, you know, like, I don't. I don't want to be the face of this I, because at some point, like, I'd want to just kind of step out and let it keep going. Um, I know, you know, and just keep cleaning up the community and just, that's the goal, man. Just to clean it up like the, uh, the gaming Wally just going in and taking up all the junk stuff and turning it into little bricks and building stuff. It's kind of what I see. It's just bad, man. It's bad. It's real bad. And like, the thing is like, I, I try to do is, you know, you want to have the biggest impact you can when you're trying to impact for change and, you know, in order to do that, you kind of have to put yourself out there. And so when it came to streaming, I was like, I'm just gonna play the games I want to play, but I'm realizing there's nothing wrong with playing the games you want to play. I played a bunch of Zelda games. I'm realizing that like, if I want to affect a community positively, like I have to be in it. I have to be a part of it. And you know, the hard community is to be in right now. Um, you know, are the ones that are big and the ones that have, you know, multiple people playing. And so it's just like, that's rough, dude. This is the most, real podcast episode i've put out so far aside from the one where i answered a bunch of questions because that was literally just me answering questions but so real just answering as many questions that one that was fun yeah that's pretty much it guys yeah that's it all right shutting it down happy gaming